Okay, now we go into the real uh, crux of uh, this uh, course. So, yesterday I told you the basic fundamental thing about security is that I need isolation. Isolation from what? Isolation from memory, isolation from wherever I store some data. See, two process, this is all data processing and two process communicates by sharing data, right. So, I need a complete isolation between processes and how will segmentation, the concepts that we have discussed so far in this session, how will it help us in achieving process isolation and that is what we are going to do. Already, I, I again repeat, we have talked about intra-process isolation. Now, we will talk about inter-process isolation. What is intra-process isolation? I isolated my data, I isolated my stack, I isolated my code, right? Now, today I am going to talk about isolating two different processes. There are two processes, process 1 and process 2. That has a CSDS and SS, this has a CSDS and SS. That process 2 CS should or SS or DS should not be accessible to process 1 and vice versa. How are we going to achieve this? I will go very slow on this session. I will go step by step and I hope at the end we will get some very good understanding. So, let us start from this point. First, there are two descriptor tables, the global descriptor table and the local descriptor table. The global descriptor table's base address is stored in GDTR. The local descriptor table's base address is stored in LDTR. <coughs> the way I could change that address is using two instructions namely LGDT and LLDT and these two, two instructions are privileged instructions and it cannot be done by any Tom, Dick and Harry, it has to be done by, huh? oh yes. it has to be done by a privileged level 0 code, right. <coughs> now, I was expecting this question, some of, uh, maybe it is uh, it's, it's a slightly uh, obvious question. <coughs> we said, right, jump 0 x 20 colon 1000. Then I said, go to the 30 second entry in the descriptor table, correct? Which descriptor table? Is it the local descriptor table or the global descriptor table? Have I told that? How will you decide that? And this is where some intricacies of the architecture has to be understood, right? Now, what is the size of your descriptor table? Huh? Eight, 8 bytes. Uh, sorry, the size of a descriptor? 8 bytes. So, when I start storing descriptors one after another, suppose I store the first descriptor at 0, uh, at 1000 or something, the next, uh, next descriptor will be stored where? 1008. So, all, so, next will be stored where? 16. So, the last three bits will always be 0 because these are all 8 bytes in length and your descriptor table actually starts in a 4 byte, 8 byte boundary, sorry, it starts in a 8 byte boundary. So, it starts in an address where the last three bits are 0. If it is an, it is, if it is divisible by 8, that means the last three bits should be always 0, right? So, I start with 0 uh, with, uh, with some address in which the last three bits are 0. Then the next descriptor will be stored in another address which is also a multiple of 8. Again, the last 3 bits will be 0 and so on and so forth. So, when I am giving the actual offset address within the descriptor table, the last 3 bits will always be 0. You are getting this? The last 3 bits will always be 0. And those 3 bits, I can utilize it for some other purpose because they are not useful for me to find the offset. Anyway, I can append three zeros and go and get the offset. In those three bits, the first two bits, I will be using it for some other purpose. I am going to talk about it later. The third bit, that is 0, 1, 2, that is the third bit, which is the second number, number 2. 
0 is the first bit, first is the second bit and second is the third bit. The third bit, if I make t1 is equal to 0, that let that bit be t1. If t1 is 0, that means it is a GDT. If t1 is 1, that means it is a LDT, right. If I say 0 x 20, that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, right. If I say 0 x 20, that is the first two four bits are 0, the next two four bits are 0 x 1, 0. That is how we cal ca convert hexadecimal to binary, correct. Now, that, that essentially means that what is the second bit there? It is 0. So, essentially it is a GDT. If I want to access the same 0 x 20 descriptor in the LS, uh, 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 LDT, I should put 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. What is 0, 1, 0, 0? 4. So, if I say 0 x 2, 4, then essentially it means what? The 20th descriptor in the LDT. You are getting this. So, this is some architectural conventions that uh, this is the way architecture maintains. Otherwise, you know, you will have one more bit separate bit for LDT, GDT, it becomes much complex. So, these are all some of the optimizations the architecture has done. So, what will the architecture do? It will start loading your descriptor table in an address which is a multiple of 8. We will see how it is going to do. And that address will be pointed to by whom? The GDTR. And every offset within that address will also be multiple of 8. If I have a multiple of 8, then the last 3 bits are zeros. That last 3 bits can be used for something else. And in which one of the 3 bits, the most significant of those 3 bits, is used to indicate whether I am trying to access that descriptor in the GDT or whether I am going to access that descriptor in the Correct? This is very, very important. Okay, so, so, since segment descriptors have are each 8 bytes, the last 3 bits of the selector is always 0, in which one of them is used for indicating whether I am going to get the descriptor from the LDT or get the descriptor from the GDT. You are, you are, this is correct? Clear? So, we, when we do the lab exercise, we will, you will actually do this. Right? So, so, we will tell you how to do this. Now, this is the slide which is the most important slide which will try and answer you many, many questions. Okay? And we will spend at least 10 minutes in the slide to understand what it means. This is the slide which is talking about inter-process protection in your uh, setup. Now, let us say there are two processes each of PL equal to 3 privilege level equal to 3. That means they are executing through a code segment whose privilege level is 3. Now, each of these processes will have its own. So, when process 1 is created, like I say a dot out and press an entry, then the operating system will create a process execution environment for me and allow you to execute. So, when a process 1 is created by the operating system, it creates an LDT for it. When the process 2 is created by an operating system, it creates another LDT for it, right? right? And so, when process 1 is executing, it will load the LDTR with that LDT start address. When process 2 is executing, it will load the LDTR with the process 2's LDT address. So, essentially this LDT is per process for every pro every process and now note that I am a process, now process 1 and process 2 are all level, privilege level 3 code. So, they cannot go and change the value of the LDTR. Why? Because the value of the LDTR can be changed only by an instruction namely LLDT, right? And the privilege level for that is so, it is a privileged instruction. Now, and then I have a GDTR, right, and the process cannot even change that GDTR. All the segments in the GDTR will have privileged level 2 and, up, two and below. So, as a process 3, I cannot go and use anybody in the GDT, 
because that privilege level will be what? Less than 3. So, it will be 2, 1 and 0. So, I cannot use any segment in the GDT, right? So, I am and since I cannot change my LDTR, I can use only the segments sit in my LDT because I cannot change my LDTR. So, whatever I can use is only within my LDT and in that LDT, the operating system will populate only those segments which it has allocated to you. It will not go and allocate anything else, right. So, I can use only the segments within my LDT and those segments are filled up by the operating system. So, I can use them. Similarly, so and I cannot also go and access that fellow's LDT because that is separated from me. If I want to access that fellow's LDT, I have to change the value of the LDTR to point to his LDT and I cannot change it because I am a privilege level 3 code. Only a privilege level 0 code can change it, right. So, I am now restricted to use my my, my LDT alone, I can use the segments that are described only by the descriptors inside my LDT and that is also populated by the operating system. Now, the GDT are, the, the GDT and the LDTs, all these LDTs are also in the memory. Now, they are all inside a segment which is privilege 0, that is the operating system will have some memory reserved for it. In that memory, in the operating system memory, these GDTs and LDTs will be loaded there and that segment will also be a 0 segment. So, I cannot go and change the entries in the GDT or LDT because they are in a 0 level segment, right. So, by this what I am doing, I, I, I can use only the code segment, data segment and stack segment that are part of my LDT. I cannot go and use the other fellows code segment, data segment because they are not part of it. If I want to use that, I have to go and change the LDT value and that is not possible because I am privileged level 3 code. And all the GDT is also in privileged level 0 uh, uh, segments there. I cannot use any segment in GDT. Then I cannot go and add anything to my LDT or add anything to my GDT because these are stored in a memory which is also at privileged level 0 in the operating system memory. So, I cannot go and add or delete anything into my LDT also. Right? So, by this there is a complete process protection between uh, uh, between process 1 and process 2, both are executing at privilege level 3, but this cannot touch that fellow's code stack data and that fellow cannot touch this fellow and they cannot do anything except what it is assigned to them by the operating system. Okay? This is how, this is a model by which we can get isolation between processes. Okay? So, now I will read the last block statement, if at all each process should access memory, it has to use the descriptors in its LDTR only and it cannot change the LDTR or the LDT or the GDTR or the GDT contents as they would be maintained in a higher privileged memory area. They are all memory locations only, they are all inside the memory, but if I want to go and change as a code, then I need access to that segment. Right? And that segment would be a yeah, privilege 0 segment, so I cannot go into it. Right? You all got this? So, this is how a combination of the GDT and LDT plus privileged instructions put together and the privilege level associated with every descriptor, all these things put together can give us a perfect inter process isolation. But many of the operating systems, even if you go through the thing, does not implement it as rigorous as this and that is why we have some issues. We will look at that when we go into the operating system course, but let us understand this in this perspective, right. Now, <coughs> these are some uh, uh, architectural issues. Now, Accessing memory itself is very, very slow and that is why we bought in cache memory, etc. We will not deal about cache memory, etc. They, they are all uh, topics of computer architecture, but we introduced a notion of a cache because memory access is slow. Memory access is at least 10 times slower than the processor speed. It is a very, very uh, uh, optimistic uh, assumption, right. 
memory can be much slower than the processor. Now, what we have done now by introducing the security issue, by introducing the step, when I want to access memory, first I have to go, first I will fetch the instruction. Now, I know what I want to access memory now. First thing is I have to now go to the, the script R table. From there, I have to collect the base and then add it to my thing. Again, now I have to go and access memory. So, one memory access has now become two memory access. Do you understand this? One memory access has become two memory access. Already memory access from a performance point of view is like a monkey. Now, this monkey has become drunkard, mad. It kills your performance now. It becomes slowly, it becomes extremely slow. Right? So, this is the cost of security. So, now how do you solve this problem? <coughs> right? So, the problem is solved as follows. When I say CS, there is a visible part of that CS, visible to whom? Visible to the programmer. And what do you see in that visible part? The offset into that table. But there is a hidden part which you call as a shadow part, which is not visible to the programmer. I, visible means I cannot go and manipulate it. In that part, I will store the base address, I will store the limit, I will store the DPL, the privilege levels. Right? So, whenever <coughs> I am saying move ds, comma 0 x 10, the moment I say brings move, move ds, comma 0 x 10, what I do there? I move the base address, the limit and the privilege level of that, that uh, 16th descriptor also along with that. So, when I am updating the ds visible part with the value 0 x 10, that is 16, the, for the corresponding descriptor, whatever the base address limit and DPL, I store it in the shadow or the hidden part. Got this? So, Whenever I am accessing DS, <coughs> what are the checks I need to do? What are the first thing? I need the base address. To that, uh, if I say move, D, uh, move uh, EAX, comma, DS colon 0x1000 or whatever. So, what I need? I need the base address. That base address will be available in the hidden part. So, I need not go to the memory. I will get it from the hidden part. Then what I do? I have to check the offset with the limit, whether the offset is exceeding the limit. That also I will have it in the hidden part, right? And then what is it that I need to do? Uh, I need to I need to check the privilege level. That's also in the hidden part, right? But the architecture has actually made it hidden, so that the programmer cannot manipulate it. So this is not manipulatable. So still my notion of security remains same, but my performance now is addressed because this is completely a hidden part. Okay. So, for me to get the base, for me to get the limit for checking and for me to get the privilege level for checking, I need not go to memory every time. I will look at the hidden part. Correct? You are getting this? So, by this I am addressing the performance issue. There was a performance degradation. There would be a major performance degradation if at all we did not bring this hidden part. So, what lesson do we learn? Some point of time when we develop some secure architecture for specific purposes. We may not do a general purpose security thing. One of the thing is that more and more we start putting security checks, there will be a direct correlation in terms of degradation in performance. And that every point of time we need to come out with such type of innovative solutions that will address this performance. And in the act of innovating a solution, we should also see to it that the security is not again compromised. In this case, Yes, the security is not compromised to a large extent because we know the base address limit and uh, DPL is, is, we know that it is stored in a shadow part which is not accessible to the program. It is isolated from the program. Okay. 
Now, this is where you should be extremely careful. Now, let us say uh, <coughs> let us say that this is uh, move uh, 0 x 10 okay, uh, and that 0 x uh, 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 0, 0 x 10 and that 0 x 10 is in d s. Okay. The tenth, the, the thirty sixteenth descriptor essentially shows the base address hundred. So suppose I say add d s colon twenty comma e x. Okay, what will happen? D s stores the value zero x ten. So I go to the zero x tenth descriptor. I get a value hundred. That hundred I add with this twenty, and I get an address hundred and twenty. In that hundred and twenty, whatever value is stored, I take that. I add it with the value of e x and store it back there itself, right. So, this is destination source. So, I, I take the value at 120, add it with e x and store it back at 120 memory location itself, okay. So, this is how this happens. Now, what has happened is I go and change the base from 100 to 200. I just go to the memory location as operating system, I just go and go to that memory location and make that value as 200. <coughs> now again I execute add ds colon 20 comma ex. What will the new value be? The new value will still be 120 because just because I changed it to 200, the hidden part will not change because the, uh, this is some memory location. There is no way by which I go and say that this memory location corresponds to that hidden part because that correlate, that type of a link I do not have. This is some, as far as I am concerned, I am going to some memory location and making 200. But this has to get reflected back in the hidden part of your DS. So, if after I change this 200, the immediately if I go and execute add DS colon 20 comma EX, still it will give me the answer 120. So, whenever I go and change the base, Immediately, I have to execute again move ds, 0x10. Again, move this. That time, what will happen? 0x10 will be there, but then the new base and uh, limit and address will go and get updated into the hidden part. And then, now you again do add ds colon 20, comma ex, then it will give you 220, right. So, these are some things that uh, happens, right, when you start. Uh, so, what? why I am giving you this case study is because some point of time you start uh, porting a separating kernel, separation kernel onto your x86 or ARM platform, then there are a lot of issues that will come and many of the things you may have to do it in assembly and when you start doing this, these are some of the issues that will come very, very important there, right. So, what did we do? We wanted to introduce security. Because of introducing security, there was a performance degradation. To, to remove that performance degradation, what did we do? we added a shadow register and because of adding that shadow register, we landed up with some other problem and that is what we are solving, right. So, please note that every problem has a solution which leads to another problem which again has a solution which leads to another, somewhere it stops, in this case fortunately stopped here, right, right. So, this is some, see what I am trying to uh, tell here is uh, to express uh, this feeling here that whenever we try to solve a problem where we miss is that we do not go to the grassroots, right. So, so this is one example where we have gone fully to the end and saw that everything is fixed, right. And, uh, this is also a case study where I, oh, there is a problem, okay, let us have this fix. And what is the implication of that fix? It is very pretty obvious here, right, but it is an enemy of correctness, right. So, you, you lose that correctness if you think it is obvious. So, this is how we proceed, okay. So, please have these case studies in mind because when you, when you, when you build a security architecture in whatever form, uh, this, these type of small, small things actually makes a big difference uh, because ultimately if I give, uh, yesterday as I told you, right, I have a very, very good security in my financial institution, but I say every one week you change your password. 
then no fellow will come to your institution. They will close your bank account and go to some other bank. Followed? Right? So, you should get a, get a security solution that is also user friendly. It is not a so no restrict. Suppose I say, you know, if you want to enter this all, I will have put some five fingerprint and each combinations of fingers. You say, I do not want to attend this course anymore. Okay? Right? So, it is very, very important that uh, you get some practical solutions. And here, just introducing that privilege level, what has happened? We landed up in a mess with respect to performance. And then we say, I am going to market this processor without this type of fix. Then your code will be very, very slow. Right? Nobody will buy it. Okay? Fine, if I lose data, it is fine. I can't undergo this torture. Okay? Then so, so you have to come out with fix. And that fix will have some other issues. This is one example of that. 